And welcome to Hannity. And tonight, the so-called journalists over at NBC News, they stooped to a new low. They've been caught red-handed yet again, deceptively editing a soundbite to make it appear that the father of a Sandy Hook victim was heckled by gun rights advocates. Here's the backstory. Now, earlier this week in Connecticut, a task force on gun violence prevention and children's safety, they held a meeting. And one of the people who spoke before the committee was Neil Helson, he, his son was tragically killed in the Sandy Hook school shooting back in December. And in typical fashion, NBC News aired an edited soundbite of this father. Now, this is what NBC News showed their viewers. Watch this. Why anybody in this room needs to have an assault, one of these assault style weapons or military weapons or high capacity clips? Now, one person can answer that question. Or give me a no, no, no. All right. Please, please, no comments while Mr. Heslin is speaking. Okay. Or we'll clear the room. Now, NBC News, they ran that soundbite several times yesterday on their network and even posted it on their website. Now, anybody watching that clip would have thought that the people in the room were heckling Mr. Heslin. But the full tape, that shows the real story. Now, the complete exchange that NBC News did not want you to see includes the portion when Mr. Heslin was clearly asking people in the room listening to his testimony for feedback. Watch this. Oh, I, I wish I asked. If there's anybody in this room that can give me one reason or challenge this question, why anybody in this room needs to have an assault, one of these assault style weapons or military weapons or high capacity clips? And now one person can answer that question. Or give me a. All right. Please, please, no comments while Mr. Heslin is speaking. Okay. Or we'll clear the room. Mr. Heslin, please continue with it. Anybody, anyway, we're, we're all entitled to our own opinion. And, and I respect their, their opinions and their thoughts. But I wish they'd respect mine and give it a little bit of thought. And realize that it could have been their child that was in that school that day. Now, my thoughts and prayers go out to him, obviously. Now, what you didn't see in the part that NBC News deceptively edited was Mr. Heslin politely asking for the audience's input. Now, this was not a matter of gun rights supporters rudely interrupting somebody to push their agenda. The only people here pushing an agenda in all of this appears to be the biased news people over at NBC. But sadly, this is not the first time that they have been caught doing this. Now, back in March of last year, right here on this very program, we exposed how NBC News blatantly distorted the 911 call that George Zimmerman made just before he shot Trayvon Martin. Now to refresh your memory, this is the tape that the network played for its viewers. Watch. This guy looks like he's up to no good. He looks black. Did you see what he was wearing? Yeah, a dark hoodie. Now, that's not how the call actually happened, because what you didn't hear was that Zimmerman had been explicitly asked by the 911 operator about the person's race. Oh, different context. Watch this. Sanford Police Department. Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. Uh, this guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. It's raining, and he's just walking around looking about. Okay, and this guy, is he white, black, or Hispanic? He looks black. Oh, so actually the 911 operator is the one that asked the question. Pretty unbelievable. Joining me now with reaction, author, attorney, David Limbaugh, Fox News political analyst, Juan Williams. You know, David, look, there is some editing that goes on in television, but when you purposely edit to alter the context, to give people a false conclusion, is that libel? Well, I, it could be. I don't know about that. I want to be careful about that. But there's other examples. This is just the latest example. John Nolte at Breitbart uh, cited a bunch of different examples with Andrea Mitchell and, and Ed Schultz uh, trying to make uh, Rick Perry look racist. And I, I want to point out, look, look at the way the media intervened in the debates. The media no longer, the mainstream liberal media, no longer reports the news. They try to influence the news. And what happened here is a microcosm of what happens every day. 
where they try to set up an alternative reality to make it look like the things that are terrible in society under Barack Obama, the 8 to 10 percent unemployment, they try to paint that as normal. The fact that we've had the worst recovery in 50 years, they paint that as normal. Look at the economic report today. They downplay that. Uh, they downplay uh, the plight of African Americans. Uh, they they uh, always paint a rosy picture of what's going on. And if it were not for that, Obama would not have won the election. He would not have a 60 percent approval rating. He would not be depicted by the media as a person who wants to get along and compromise, but as a person who is divisive and says it's my way or the highway, who has a totalitarian approach, who is a socialist. They cover up for oh. him because they agree with his agenda and they want to influence the agenda. The end justifies the means, and we're All suffering right. for let, it let today. Me, well, I don't know why Juan's laughing. Juan, wait a minute. Because here. David, wait, David, David, David is so over the top. If I mean, you, David, Juan, David you just, you're just hating on Obama. You say you can't stand this, you can't stand that. Well, let's no, get back to what Sean was talking about. Because Sean him. had an, an important point, which was NBC, especially in that George Zimmerman case, clearly, I thought, acted irresponsible. You can't edit a piece of tape like that to say that the guy is interjecting race when in fact he was asked about it. In the first instance though, the man who was testifying, the man who was the father of that tragically dead child in Newtown, I thought he was using a rhetorical device. I didn't think he was actually asking people to well, respond. Wait, wait, I thought he was second. trying to well, say, wait, well, Juan, hey, who can answer this question? There was a delay there. This is the point. They, they took yeah. out the delay. I thought it was a rhetorical question, and obviously everybody there thought it was rhetorical. Nobody Correct. answered. And then he goes, well, obviously nobody can answer my question. And so then it appeared to me and to the audience, obviously, that he wanted an answer. But the way well, NBC no. did it by taking out... The, the, that period of time when nobody interrupted, everyone was being and, attentive, they purposely wanted people to draw a different conclusion. That is and, media and, bias. I don't think it's, it's a gratuitous. big deal. I mean, I understand your point. I think oh, if they collapse that no. time period, that, that could lead to, but I, you know what? I took it that I understood. In fact, the guy was quite respectful. If I was in your shoes, Sean, I would say, why they cut off the end where he says, I understand other he was very, but so view, was the audience there. That audience was respectful. Well. They did not right. heckle him, and they sat there they quietly when he asked that rhetorical question. And then when he said, oh, nobody here can respond, then they gave an answer because he asked for one. Just like they want to uh, portray the Tea Party as racist and cut black people out of the image, uh, and, and, and they create manufactured stories, they want to, to look, make gun owners look racist, mean-spirited, and violent and unruly. And the opposite is true. Uh, gun owners and supporters of the Second Amendment merely want to exercise their constitutional right to protect themselves against hostile intruders and bad guys and against a potentially tyrannical government. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that except uh, according to the worldview of these crazy professors in liberal land who want to dis, uh, dispense with the Constitution. This, uh, this is David, midstream, uh, mainstream right. America, Juan. David, let me, let me agree with you. I think gun owners, because I've seen poll numbers on this, and, it, and it's pretty consistent across different polls, gun owners, for example, say, yes, let's have effective law enforcement, let's have effective background checks. The problem comes when you get someone like Wayne LaPierre, the head of the National Rifle Association, they testifying Congress. Right, no, I, I don't, we've already I don't debated want background this. Juan, checks. Go back. I don't want smaller magazines. Don't get I don't think anybody Juan, agrees with that. Juan, don't, don't, don't go backwards back here. Background. Wait a minute. This is a problem because NBC News is an extension of an agenda, and that agenda is the White House agenda. And it's never been more blatant, uh, more transparent, more on display than what we saw both in the Zimmerman case, the Andrea what? Mitchell case, and in this case. Because huh. the, the, the people in that audience were respectful to this man, as they should be. And they made it out that he was not. That's disgraceful. Well, I think that people, if, if people oh, distort the editorial content, that is disgraceful. I'm saying I'm not so sure as you are about this man testifying and whether people testify. Look but at when it. I look at, but when I look at what happened today in Congress, when I look at Gabby Gifford saying to these congressmen, be courageous, be bold, All right, David take Lesworth. action. 
David, th th we're, off, we're off the subject here. Do you think there's any chance that Barack, o Barack Obama could have won this election were it not for the deliberate distortion and the alternate reality that the media is no. creating for him? Covering up for his terrible economy, having people in an exit poll actually blaming Bush in the twilight zone for this economy that's gone on four years that is now getting worse because he's smothering the private sector. David, his stimulus David, doesn't you know, work. They cover David. up his entitlement. Uh, d David, yes. the election's over. You're not holding a grudge, are you, David? No, no. Oh, come on. He's still and campaigning, are, and you are. I don't care how much NBC does. The American right. people are smart enough to see the realities of these two candidates for themselves. Yeah, by the way, not great economy. Not the propaganda. Great. Not, we, we not gotta run. the propaganda. Uh, good to